everyone, and welcome to this other 99 Extra, where we look at the top 10 bears in Commander. Now, we're actually talking about two twos for two this time, and not creatures with the type bear, so no need to close the window this time. At number 10, we have Crystal and Sliver and Eladomery, Lord of Leaves. Now, these two share number 10 because they're both tribal bears, and so they're still corner case cards, so we didn't feel like they deserved to be higher up. But they're both really good in their tribes. Crystal and Sliver gives all Sliver's Shroud, which, as anyone who's played against Sliver's knows, is devastating. And Eladomery gives Elves Forest Walk and Shroud. And a lot of people play green, so Forest Walk is really, really bad news for the green players if someone runs out an army of Elves. At number 9, we have Kargan Dragonlord. And Kargan Dragonlord is, simply put, before he levels up, just a 2-2 two, two for 2. He has no abilities whatsoever, except for the ability to level up. By the time he gets to level 8, he is an 8-8 eight, eight with flying, trample, and fire breathing. And the total amount of mana that you're going to be paying for that is 10 red mana, which isn't that big of a deal once you realize that you're going to be paying for that over time. Yes, he's just a beat stick. He doesn't do anything really special, but I think because he is one of the best beat sticks for his mana cost, he definitely deserved his spot on the top 10. At number 8 we have Rift Sweeper, and I personally play Rift Sweeper in my Aiden Oakenshield deck because he helps protect my survival combo. If someone exiles one of my combo pieces, I can just Rift Sweeper them back in and I'm good to go and it won't even cost me that much extra mana. But aside from that, Rift Sweeper does a lot of other things, such as shut down Joria players because you can just sweep in their suspended cards, and that makes a lot less of a nightmare for you. At number 7, we have Vexing Shusher. Now, Vexing Shusher is really powerful, especially for decks, uh, like Brianna was saying earlier, that they have a combo that they have Protect from Counter Magic. Vexing Shusher itself cannot be countered, which is excellent, and it can make any spell uncounterable for just one red or green mana. Uh, he's not further up on the list because not everyone plays Counter Magic, and so he's not always going to be good in every situation. At number 6, we have Scavenging Ooze. Now, Scavenging Ooze is a bear that I think does about everything. He's Graveyard 8. If he hit creature cards, he can get bigger and become a sizable beater himself. And he can gain life. And with all this wrapped up in one, he's just a really great 2-2 two -two for 2. At number 5, we have Grand Abolisher. And I really like Grand Abolisher because I'm very attached to City of Solitude. But City of Solitude is green, so if you're playing white... Having an effect like Grand Abolisher on such a cheap body is really great. I mean, Grand Abolisher shuts down everything from counter magic to people activating tops when it's not their turn. I mean, that's such a wide range of things that Grand Abolisher stops in their tracks that this guy makes people play the game on your terms. And since you're playing mono white, your terms are, there's no such thing as the stack. At number four, we have Fauna Shaman. Now, Fauna Shaman is effectively survival of the fittest on a body. There's not much else to say more than that, but one of the things we can say about Fauna Shaman is the reason why it's not higher up on the list. Fauna Shaman requires you to have green, and also requires you to tap it in order to be able to get its effect. And you also have to have a creature card in hand in order to use it. So, there's a lot of little pieces that have to go into Fauna Shaman in order for you to actually get value off of it. Unlike some of the rest of the cards in this list, that once they hit the battlefield, they have an effect almost immediately. At number three, we have Ethersworn Canonist. And Ethersworn Canonist is almost rule of law on a body, except for the fact that if you're playing an artifact deck and you've built around Ethersworn Canonist, Ethersworn Canonist does not affect you. So you will be able to play all sorts of spells while your opponents are sitting around not being able to do anything. But even if you haven't built around Ethersworn Canonist, it's a good way of slowing down faster decks. It's a good way of stopping combo decks. It's really just a solid body to land any time in the game, whether it's early game or late game. At number two, we have Eight and a Half Tails. And I, I promise Eight and a Half Tails isn't at number two just because he's my general and I have a lot of bias towards him. It's actually because he does pretty much everything you need him to do. He can help you get creatures through for combat because you can just give all your creatures protection from white and make all their creatures white. And suddenly either Tails himself or a bunch of other creatures are getting through. He can protect your permanence. He stops spot removal. If you have the mana for him, he can pretty much do anything you would want to do, especially in a wide deck. At number one, we have Gaddock Teague. Gaddock Teague, if you build around it, can be just devastating for your opponents. And even if you don't really build around it, it's still devastating for your opponents. This guy really, really shuts down control decks. And a lot of other uh, style decks too. 
If you have any kind of X burn spells, if you're a red deck that likes to burn things away, Gaddock T gets rid of that. If you have an X spell that draws a bunch of cards, Gaddock T gets rid of that. <laughs> Space is revelation. Basically, Gaddock T forces your opponents to be playing the same game that you're playing, which will probably be a creature-heavy strategy. But your opponents aren't equipped to play the game, whereas you've built your deck around it, so it ends up being devastating for them. I really like Gaddock Teague because he punishes people for playing too many expensive spells. So if you're not playing cheap spot removal to get rid of Gaddock Teague, maybe that's a problem in your deck building. People are always complaining about control or combo or whatever, and I know he doesn't always shut down combo because a lot of combo in Commander is creature-based, but I think if you build a deck with the idea of not losing to Gaddock Teague in mind, then I think your deck's going to come out better at the end of the day, and that's why I actually like Gaddock Teague. And that's our top 10 bears in Commander. Now, there is a little pattern, if you notice, the creatures in this are very green and white heavy. Another thing that's missing from this list is any of the Return of Ravnica or Gate Crash guild mages, or even the original Ravnica guild mages. They are all bears. They are all two twos for two. But we felt that their abilities, uh, even though some of them are really powerful, are really limited to just one deck or one combo. But we tried to pick cards that would fit into a broader range of decks. Now, if you guys disagree with us, and you guys think that some of these other cards deserve to be in our top 10, go ahead and let us know in the comment section below. And also, if you like these top 10s and would like to see more top 10s in the future, also let us know that in the comment section below. So, until next time, I'm Karsten. And I'm Brian. And thanks for watching.